Morning. So, um, can I just do a couple of quick shows of hands to try and get a sense of what your experience level is so I know which kind of things to concentrate on? So, if you are a member of the Apache Software Foundation, can you raise a hand? Okay. I may point to you later on to help with some of the questions. If you're a committer, can you raise your hand? There's quite a lot of committers. If you have seen an Apache Way talk before, okay, so, can you come to the front because I'm going to point to you guys when I need some help. So, <clears throat> I don't want this talk to be a lecture with me standing at the front and telling you exactly how it is always because that's not really the Apache way. So what I'm going to try and do is have questions coming in, point to various Apache members who are around the room, get them to, to feed in, and try and make this a bit more collaborative because that is at the heart of the way that we develop our software. So I do have to stand roughly here and have the mic on because it's being videoed. Um, but ideally, we will um, we will try and make it more collaborative, get some get some input, make sure that we focus on the things that you really want to hear about. Some of the things in my slide deck duplicate what Jim's ended up saying, so I'll tend to skip over those, assuming that all of you got out of bed in time to hear Jim speak. But the slides will be available later; they'll be going up on the website. So it hopefully won't matter if I skip over some of those because you can always come back later on, have a look at them, and then more importantly, discuss with your colleagues and your, your friends and your communities about some of the stuff that's been mentioned. Um, so I have to say a big thank you to a few people who've helped with these slides. Um, what would be quite good as an idea if some people want to write some code at some point is it'd be great if we had some software that let us track the branches and evolutions of the different slide decks that have sort of forked and merged and things. That, that would be great. I mean, we've got technologies like Apache Tika that will make the work of getting the text out. And I'm, hopefully, maybe some of the subversion guys will, will know some great stuff about diffing the code and we can make it happen. And I think that would sort of revolutionize the world of presenting. But in, in the meantime, um, if you've been to other Apache Way talks, you may, you may see some of these slides before. And if you've got any feedback, let me know afterwards and I can put them in and then the next person who stands up to give the updated version of this talk can, can inherit from them. So what is the Apache Way? The short answer is it is this thing that we've come up with that lets us build code and communities and manage it all despite the problems that we face in the process. So I'm going to try and cover a little bit about how the foundation works, but I'll go quite quickly through that because Jim's covered a lot of it already. Try and talk about how we develop code, what we found that works, and importantly, what we found that hasn't really worked. A little bit around business on Apache, and I'll be pointing around the audience. So some history. How did we get here today? As Jim mentioned, it started out with the Apache group, some people collaborating on a code base a formerly abandoned code base that they needed for their business, and they needed to get together, work on it, develop it, improve it. So that was 95 that they started sharing patches. Then in 99, there was a, a, a formal legal structure was needed. So the Apache Software Foundation was created. Uh, and it's a virtual worldwide organization. There's not one office somewhere filled with coders and, and um, administrators and things. We're, we're spread all around the world and we come together at events like this to meet and actually put a face to a name. And so today we've got hundreds of projects. Some of them are tiny, small libraries. Some of them are huge systems like Hadoop. Many of them are critical pieces of, of infrastructure components that get built up into the systems that get used and deployed. And we have some end user tools as well, like OpenOffice. And what we try to um, emphasize is the community, the way of working, the way of resolving problems which come up. So by numbers, as, as Jim said earlier, we've got over 100 projects, 
got 34 currently going through the incubator, and I'll talk a little bit about what the incubator is uh, a bit later on. Got over 500 members, um, and then we've got lots more people who are involved in different capacities, such as being committers and ICLAs on file who've made significant contributions. This is the list as of Saturday of the different projects we've got. There's quite a lot of them. Um, I think we're still missing a why. If any incubating projects are... <laughs> Do we? I thought we had our Ivy. Hmm. Okay, yes, there's a couple of letters still to, still to go um, if you're thinking of pro proposing a new project. So, structure of the foundation. One way to view it, which I'm not a big fan of because I think it emphasizes the wrong things, is you have a project that's responsible for code and the board with the foundation above it. The way I like to emphasize is that we have a number of projects that are responsible for their code, for their community, and the direction that it's moving in. The board is there to provide oversight, but it's not got any impact on what code gets written. The board doesn't say, hmm, I think what we really need is another big data solution. And the board doesn't turn up and go, Tomcat, what we need you to do is we need you to add a new method in here and refactor that class. That doesn't happen. It's up to the communities to decide what should be done, where they should be going. The foundation does provide the support to make it easy to focus on the code and the community. There are things that are not so good for volunteers to do, things that don't tend to work well when volunteers go, oh, you know, I've got some other stuff to do, some personal stuff to do, we won't worry about that. And so the, the foundation tries to provide the support that means that the projects can concentrate on their code and their community. <coughs> so we have Apache Labs, um, which is a place where committers can come together and try out an idea. Most things go into the labs and then they finish. It's an idea, try it out. Some things, either from within labs or from outside, start to gain a bit of momentum. There's some code, there's some people, and they've heard about this Apache thing and they want to get involved in Apache. And that's where the incubator comes in. The incubator is the process where a project enters the foundation, learns the way that the foundation works, learns the way that we develop software, learns the Apache way. And at the end of that, they will either graduate to a top level project or within another top level project, or they will decide that maybe the, the Apache way is not for them and leave. And there are some projects who come into the incubator, try it out and go, you know what, actually this is not, it's not the right fit for us. It's not the right fit for the kind of things we want to do, the way we want to work. And then they leave again, and that's fine. The incubator is a, is, a, is a trial. It's a process that people go through, communities go through to build. And I believe there's a talk on the incubator a bit later on. Um, so if you're interested in bringing a new project in to Apache, and you want to know more detail on what's involved and the ways of, that your community would potentially need to change as you, as you learn and incorporate the Apache way, then do go along to those talks. Alternately, there's a bar camp happening tomorrow night. We did a bar camp on Sunday, and we had quite a few sessions on the incubator there. There's a small bar camp happening tomorrow night. So if you want to know more and you want to have a, a more informal chat about it, that's a good way to do it. So um, from the incubator, something will go up to being a top-level project. Then we also have the attic. Software projects can last forever, but the communities around them don't necessarily. There are technologies that are no longer relevant, that were at one point really important, but things have moved on. And we try to explain to the world the state of the software within the foundation. So, with the incubator, if you look at the project, it's branded as being part of the Apache incubator. The releases are incubating releases. So that, As someone thinking of using that software, you know that it's mostly playing by the Apache way, but maybe there are some 
issues maybe the community is, is still learning. When it's something to top level project, you know that it will be working to the Apache way. And it will have a diverse community that's um, driving it on. But it, over time, a project can, can end up without that community where everyone has moved on to new things. And then we try and make that clear to you as a potential user that this software no longer has an, an, an active community around it. If you want to, you can come along and say, hey, um, I know everyone else has got bored of that piece of software, but actually it's important to us. Can we, can we bring it back out of the attic? Can we build a new community around it? And that's fine, and it, it does sometimes happen. But often, it's just reached the end of its natural life. And um, we need to say a, a sad goodbye to it, and then put it. The bits will still be there, but uh, the community is gone. Um, the Apache way is not all plain sailing. We have had problems, many of them. Um, not all of which are uh, around massive, massive mailing list threads, but many of them do involve that. The, the sort of, m the most well known of our, of our failings was um, Jakarta. Jakarta was a great success in terms of the software produced, but it did have issues around its community. And so what happened was that <coughs> Jakarta was an umbrella. So almost all the Java projects at Apache were within the, the, the Jakarta brand. Tomcat, Struts, and, and so on. Um, and then there started to be problems around who was responsible for it, who was going to provide the oversight for it. When things started to go wrong, when things stopped being properly according to the Apache way, whose responsibility was it to help guide it back onto the, the, the correct path? Um, and, and Avalon was the, the project that really triggered that. And it, it, it showed to the foundation as a whole that we needed to have the same model for all of our projects. Having these different layers confuse things. So now we have all projects um, are, are, are equal within the eyes of the board. And all projects submit reports every quarter. But they're not focused on the technology. It's not a sort of management thing where you say, oh, these are the four new features we added in, and do you want to give us some feedback on if those were the right features? It's not about that at all. It's about the community. The project saying, hey, we've added some new people. We've had some problems. We've been following the Apache way as best we can. Um, every self on the board does intervene when things go wrong. Um, we can tell you more about that over beers, generally, if you're interested. So our, our ecosystem. Um, the board doesn't pick a winner. We can and do have multiple projects working in the same space. And we consider that to be a good thing. Because while many of us are great coders, great developers, none of us, unfortunately, can see into the future and say, that project there, that's the one that's going to win. And what we want to do is have communities decide. Communities of developers, people running documentation, doing the testing. They're the people that should be deciding on the direction. So we will often have more than one project because there are different ways to solve the problems we face. And we want to support those different communities. Um, when projects come into the incubator, if they are trying to focus on an area where we've already got a project, we'll ask them generally to explain why they're different. That can sometimes be a hard question for a community, but it's an important one. Because if um, a new developer is going to come along and say, I need some software that's going to serve web pages. And Apache has three different projects that can serve web pages. If the communities can't explain why they're different, Okay, maybe more than three. The communities can't explain why they're different. It's going to be hard for end users to decide which one they should use. And it's going to be hard for contributors to pick which is going to be the right community for them to get involved in. We have multiple projects that work on serving web pages because they solve different problems and they solve them in different ways. And they're all friends. They don't hate each other. There's, there's a little bit of sort of friendly rivalry between them. But they all collaborate together. And you can go to them and say, 
this is the kind of problem I'm facing. Which, which one's going to be the, the best option for me? And they might say it's traffic server, they might say it's HTTPD, or they might even say, actually, for, for the problem you've got, you want to go and use Nginx, and it's not an Apache project. But the community will coalesce around an idea. And from that idea will come the code. And then from the code, you can then use it and, and build your business and, and solve your, your problems. Um, as I mentioned, there are a few foundation things other than code that exist to make the job of writing the code easier. So we've got the infrastructure team who provide <coughs> the support, the, the systems needed to build your software, store your software, discuss the software, archive it. There's the legal team who um, try and answer the questions that the foundation has around legal. Uh, Apache does not provide legal advice to people outside the foundation, but we do have some volunteer lawyers who can answer questions around some of the trademark stuff, some of the licensing stuff. Travel Assistance Committee help get people to conferences. Public Relations Committee um, deal with the interface to the outside world, especially from press. Um, got the security response team, Mark's one of the members of, I believe you're going to be speaking a bit later on if you want, in the week, if you want to know more about how that works. Fundraising, which is important because the servers need replacing and that sort of thing, and conferences. So that's provided at a foundation level so that each project doesn't have to worry about it. So the projects can focus on what's important to them, which is their code, the direction, the community they're going in. Nearly everything at Apache is volunteer-based. Um, we don't, as a foundation, have foundation-paid people writing code on the projects. Much of the code written at Apache is done by people working for a company, being paid, but they're not being paid by the foundation. There are a few paid contractors who kind of keep the the servers running and answer the phone when the press rings and that kind of thing. But everyone is there as a volunteer. That's important because it avoids the issue with people not being equal. If you've got some people who are being paid by a foundation and some people are volunteering, there's a hierarchy there. And even if you don't mean for there to be a hierarchy there, there will be a hierarchy there. If everyone is equal then you can have, or at least you've got a sporting chance of having a meritocratic structure. So if you want something done, you need to step forward and volunteer. So, mentioned merit a few times. And we can sometimes talk about a chain of merit. So what will generally happen, the way that I think most of us who are involved in Apache got involved, is that we had a problem. And we found a piece of software that nearly solved that problem. And we joined a mailing list. We posted a query saying, hey, um, how do I do this? I've started, I've got part way, how do I do this? And probably the answer came back, ah, oh, you're gonna have to solve a bug or you're gonna have to add a new feature. Because if you're a committer, that means that you've written some code, or written some documentation, or triage some bugs, or something like that, you've made a contribution. So if you've become a committer, you will have given something back to the project. So we're a commi the committers here will have come along, they will have had a problem, they will have solved that problem, added that new feature, solved that bug, written the missing piece of documentation, triaged all the bugs that got the problem solved. And they'll be making these contributions back to the project, saying, hey, Here's the new piece of documentation I think you should have. And sooner or later, that project will get fed up with having to take the patch, review it, commit it, take the patch, apply it to the documentation tree, publish it. And they go, you know what? You've shown merit. You've shown that maybe your code's not perfect, but it's good enough, and that you're playing well with others. And we want to make you a part of our project. We want to give you the ability to make changes to our source tree our documentation tree, our bug tracker, away yourself. Then once you've, you'll then have the ability to make changes as a committer to that whole area. 
it's not then governed by the technological things. There's a sort of social thing in place. So Mark here works on Tomcat. He can make changes to any bit of the Tomcat source tree he wants, technically. But there'll be areas of the tree that he knows well, areas of the tree that he doesn't know well. There'll be changes he might want to make that are very minor, very trivial, and he knows he can just go in and everyone will be happy. But if he was going to maybe go in and say, Yo, that, that piece of support there, I don't, I don't need it anymore. I'm just going to delete that whole tree. He might have the technical ability to make that change. Because he knows the community, he'll go to the community and say, hey, I think we maybe don't need that bit of code anymore. Would anyone object if I removed it? Does anyone see any reason why we should keep it, or can we tidy that area up? And then as a community, everyone sits around and goes, well, you know, that code's old, it's not needed anymore, let's get rid of it, let's, let's clean things up, or, hey, hang on a minute, no, no, that's still important for me, we shouldn't, we shouldn't remove that. Now, there's a difference there between a committer having the technical right to make the change and having the social permission of the whole community to go ahead and add that feature, make that change, remove that stuff. And the project members are sometimes all of the committers, or a subset of the committers, who can make a binding decision in the event of a release or a debate coming down to needing a vote. Votes are rare. We have a process around voting, minus one, plus one, zero, but they should be rare. Ideally, part of the Apache way is around the consensus. We can vote to resolve, but it's much better if we can just discuss and everyone goes, actually, yeah, yeah, that, that is the right way to go. We don't need a vote for that. We've all, we've all seen the explanation and we've, we've come up and decided that that's the, that's the way that our community should go. Different ways of contributing are all valued. So you can become a committer without having made code changes. Noreen is one of sadly a small number of people who were elected as a committer for work other than code. We are not perfect. We do value all of these things. We don't necessarily value them enough and we don't necessarily provide enough mentoring to people to come in. Because most of us who are committers are committers through code, so that's the route we know well. So when someone new comes into our community and says, hey, I want to get involved through coding, we all know how to help. Someone new comes in and says, hey, I want to get involved in helping with your documentation. That's out of a lot of our comfort zone, so it's harder for us to mentor. And so sadly, we do miss out on some of those contributions. It's not a perfect system. And it's something that, as a community, we need to think about. We need to look at it and go, there is a hole in our community. We need to do something to improve that. So if our documentation is better, we have fewer people asking us questions on the mailing list about things that should be the answer to. There'll be a lot of people who, if they hit a problem, won't have the confidence to join the list and post the question. If we can solve their problem in advance through documentation, they can build their confidence up, and then they can join the list, and then they can participate. If we've got that hole in the documentation, if we've got those bugs that are just being ignored and not triaged, then we'll lose those potential contributors. And the value of our software is around the value of the community around it. So we need to be welcoming and try and bring people in and, and appreciate all the different kinds of merit and all the different kinds of, of contributions. Now, the merit you earn does not buy you authority. So as we said, Mark can technically make change to any part of the Tomcat code base. Mark's also on the infrastructure team, so he can make a change and change any of our code. But he knows that that's <laughs> unlikely to be popular. It's, it's only a quick way to lose my access to it. <laughs> so Mark might have the technical ability, but he doesn't have the community buy-in. So as you gain merit within the foundation, you get privilege but you do not necessarily get the authority. So the community agrees on the direction of the project, 
the individuals make it happen. You can't have the community say, we want this new feature, some magic coding fairy appear and wave a wand and make it, make it happen. The community decides what needs to be done, but there'll be individual members of that community who are going to actually write the code, write the documentation, fix the bugs. Most decisions are reversible. There are a few that are not. Conferences being one of them. You can't say, oh, well, I know we signed a contract for a hotel venue, but actually, you know, a bug's come up. I think we might just slip it a week. Most other things are reversible and can wait. For very small changes, you, we have lazy consensus and we encourage it. You know, say, hey, um, what I'm going to be doing is I think we should be adding this new parser to Apache Tika. And then I go off and, and I work on it and I commit it and I commit it and I get feedback and it's all fine. For controversial changes or things that are going to be irreversible, um, we encourage a wait of at least 72 hours and in some cases we need a vote, especially if it's something like a release where the foundation is going to take legal responsibility for it. We do, we do require that there be a vote. But for most things, you just put the post to the list and say, hey, I, I, I think we should do this. If the tumbleweed comes through, then it's probably uncontroversial. If you're lucky, someone will come in and say, hey, yeah, that's a really good idea, but you should go and look at that other project over there who've done something similar and get an idea from that. So, plus one, minus one, zero. When we do have a vote, those are the voting options. We try and avoid the minus one. And we, in almost all cases, require it have a reason. You can't just say minus one. You have to say minus one because and explain it. So if someone's proposing a controversial change to a project and you don't want it to go ahead, you can't just say, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. You've got to say, we shouldn't do that and here is the reason why we shouldn't do that. And then as a community, you can look at it and go, hmm, actually, no, that is a good point. Something we've forgotten, something we've missed. Let's stop, let's revisit. We have a lot of lists. So one of the things about Apache is that things need to happen on the mailing list. If it didn't happen on the mailing list, it didn't happen. Because people are spread all around the world. We welcome contributions from people wherever they are in the world. And if we have a decision made with just me and Mark having a chat, deciding on the future of Tomcat, deciding that we're going to remove that whole pesky, um, I don't know, Windows support, let's just, it's awkward, let's just remove it. And the two of us just kind of sit down over a beer, <laughs> decide it, done. No one else who's not in the room, can, people who aren't in the room can't join in that participation, can't, can't get involved in the decision. If we have that discussion on a mailing list, everyone can see what's happening. They can participate then and there, which is good, but they can also come back later and see what happened. So when I join a new project, I can go back through the mailing list archives and see how they got where they are today. Okay. So, One of the things probably worth mentioning at that point is if you do a lot of, sort of software development during the day job and you use sort of having a team meeting, you need to make a decision and off you go do it. Decisions do take longer at the ASF. Um, and you just have to get used to slowing things down, sending an email, giving people a chance to read it, think about it, digest it, respond to it. Bear in mind, you might be having a discussion with somebody who's on the opposite side of the world to you, so there's a natural sort of, you write something, they reply 12 hours later, you reply, you get back more. So it can just take that, that bit longer. It's actually a good thing. Um, taking the time to reflect on what, you, what you're going to say, rather than just, no, you're wrong, no, not like that. Just think, how you to think about it, and you do get to the right decision, and in the end it just takes that little bit longer, but I think it's worth taking the time, because Nick says you've got the archive of you know, why did you make that decision. So, we have a lot of lists. The, the main ones, if you're going to be getting involved in a new project, is there's going to be a dev list, which is where 
the discussions around the code of the project will happen. There's going to be a commits list. Uh, I think there's always a commits list, but it, oh, no? Sometimes it's not. Yeah. So there, there will be a list where all of the changes to issues and the code base go. Maybe that's a separate list, maybe that'll be the dev list. Many, but not all, projects have a user list where you can go and ask questions about how to use the project. So if I have a question about how to use Tomcat, I'll go to the user list. If I have a question about how to change Tomcat, how to extend it, how to put a new feature in, that would be going to the, to the dev list. And all of our lists are archived. So if you want to go and find out what's been said in the past, then uh, the mail archives are there. No jerks allowed. <coughs> it's an important thing. Um, we need to be welcoming. We need to grow our community. People will drop out of a community naturally. Their personal lives change, their interests at work change. Um, people will always be leaving our communities, reducing their involvement in the community, so we need to bring new people in. We try through the Apache way to have a welcoming, self-sustaining set of community. But if people are being nasty, it's going to scare off new committers, new contributors. And if we scare them off, then who's going to maintain the project in two years, three years, four years? Trolls, sadly, do exist on the internet. Don't feed them. Remember that when you send an email, there is someone on the other end. Critique the code, not the person. We had the, the talk in the keynote earlier. It's fine to say that code has a problem. It's not very fun to say you have a problem. So try and remember that there are people having good days, people having bad days. Critique the code, critique the ideas, not the people. Um, if you haven't seen the talk, it's well worth having a, having a watch of it. It's really interesting. Um, and many of us can learn something from that about our own behavior. Many of us will have traits in our personalities that can be problematic for others. So we can have a watch of that and, and learn how to be a better, participation, a better participant in, in our communities. I've um, got a few minutes left, so very quickly. Um, there are different ways for contributions to be accepted, and companies are a great way for those contributions to come in. Because when I get home from work, I have a few hours. But I'm also going to need to you know, cook dinner, read a book, clean my flat, that kind of thing. If I can do some of that stuff in the day, in the working day, then there'll be more time I can spend on the project. And we understand from that, yeah, the license is structured to encourage companies to use our software and build on top of it, and build their business on top of it. Because if their business is built on top of our software and their business is booming, they'll have more money to contribute to make our communities better, to make our code better. Um, but everyone who is involved in Apache, everyone who's a committer, is there as themselves. You do not have um, a company elected to commit. You have individuals. Companies cannot buy committership. They cannot buy access. All they can do is encourage their employees to do good stuff for the project, and then those employees will gain the merit and can make the changes for the company. Uh, and we don't allow BDFLs, benevolent dictators, for life. That's something that can be a problem for projects coming into the incubator who have got a history of having one person who is deemed to have the true vision, the true voice. Um, we let everyone have a say. Um, and we have a, we try and encourage the projects to have lots of companies involved so that that way the project is not beholden to one company. If there are 10 companies involved in a project and one of them gets bought out, one of them has a change of direction, that community will survive. If there's only one company involved in a project, 
and the company gets bought out, the company goes bust, the company decides to change direction, that whole project is then going to be dead. So by encouraging lots of companies to be involved, lots of individuals, lots of organizations, we know that it will survive any one person. Um, by taking part in Apache, you're working on what you want to work on. No one can force you. I can, you know, there, there might be a bug in Tomcat. I can't say, Mark, you must fix that bug for me. I can maybe say, hey, Mark, can you give me some help with me fixing that bug? Or I can say, hey, Mark, can you give me the phone number of your sales guy so that I can pay your company to fix it for me? I can maybe give Mark some beer until he fixes it for me. But I can't say, this bug is important to me, and someone other than me must make it fixed. So we work on what we want to work on, and we work on it when we want to work on it. And we learn from the best. There are some amazing people in our communities that we can learn from. And we need to be humble and listen to them, learn from them. The code's all open. That's one of the things, is that the discussions are open. The list archives are open, so you can go back and look and see why a decision was made. You can look at the code, see what the change was, and learn from it. Um, our work is visible. All those posts you make to the mailing lists are archived, searchable, indexable. All the code you write is available to everyone, will be available forever, and it's there. And that's generally a good thing. But occasionally, people get caught out um, and will send emails asking for things to be removed. And generally, that's not something we support. So do remember, when you participate, that you're participating as you with your, your name on it. And, and think of that. And it's generally a good thing. And we have a permissive license. I think there's some more things on the, the license. Uh, and, and what that allows you to do, and equally importantly, what you're not allowed to do, which is generally around trademarks, happening a bit later. So the Apache way works. It's a process. It's a way of developing software, a way of building communities, collaborating. Um, it will not work for everyone. It will not work for all kinds of projects. It will not solve all business problems, but it will work for many of them. Um, some things can seem hard at first, but there's generally a reason why. As Mark said about the decisions waiting, yes, it does take longer if I have to write an email to the mailing list saying, this is the change I want to make, and then wait for Mark to reply, wait for someone in Australia to reply. That's going to take longer than just going, hey, Mark, should we make that change? Yep, done. But we've now got that archive, that information everyone can participate. So it's harder, but there's a value to it. Ask questions. Much of the Apache way is documented. It's documented on the websites. There are talks. You can get the slide decks. There are video recordings, audio recordings you can learn. But ask. People can point you in the right direction because it is spread out. And it's a collective, discovered process. Someone didn't come down from upon high and say, these are the four rules that make up the Apache way. We tried different things out and came up with something. So if you, if you want to know why something is, or how something is, or where you can learn more, ask and people will point and possibly go, yeah, it's, uh, give me 10 minutes and I'll just fix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, it's there. So we've got a few minutes left for questions. If anyone wants to ask anything now, Otherwise, can I get all the Apache members to put their hands up again? If you have any queries, find any of us later and ask us. Find people with the Ask Me badges and ask us. We may not know the answer, but we probably will know someone who will do. So we can, we can kind of direct you towards it. So any, any questions for the five minutes we've got? So 
my question has to do with how do you facilitate consensus? You didn't talk a lot about that, uh, but you mentioned it's very important. So um, part of the mechanisms that W3C offers, and so I'm asking to see what, what do you have. Um, so they offer telecom support and uh, note taking, uh, reports from the calls. I think it's easier sometimes to resolve things um, you know, by voice rather than by email. Um, although the notes from the call are well uh, taken. Uh, they have consensus um, recommendations from group leaders. Um, there's also, you know, you talked about the mailing list, but for example, they offer wikis where you can record um, not just you know, the discussions as they happen, but the products of those discussions and document where things are at in a group's life. Uh, they also have this notion of the groups have a mission or a goal uh, that you can articulate. Um, so I just wonder what exists in Apache to support consensus, because I agree it's very important, and, and you said so. so I wonder what you have to support. Mostly we have mailing lists and wikis and code bases that support going back if need be. Yeah, we, 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 we try and, and use the mailing list to discuss it, but as a lot of people have said, if you can't reach a conclusion based on just the words, let the code or the documentation speak for itself. And so Mark goes one way, I go another, we come back two weeks later, and then we go, well, Nick's idea looked the best in theory when we were discussing it on the list, but now we've actually seen the code, Mark's one was the right one. And Mark will go, ah, but there was this one thing that Nick did right, so I'm going to pinch that one bit from Nick's, put that in mine, <laughs> copy it over trunk. Consensus has been reached by the discussion, by the code, by the evidence of it, and then we can go, well, that was a great idea, but that's the code we need, that's the way we need to go. Idea can grow, and some of them are going to be really successful, really important things. 
none of them suggest whether it is dying in the in that time. Um, so I think that, that there's going to be that willingness to let other people experiment as well. Okay, we're out of time now, but if you want to talk more, find any of the members later or get involved in the bar camp or just bug us. And I think Shane, Shane, come on in, it's your turn.